out the woods to get some um, bits of branch and stuff to put in the hearth for uh, kind of getting ready for Christmas decoration. I found some bits of twig, which um, this is kind of fallen wood, so I haven't cut anything from live trees. This is just bits I've found lying around in the field, which Ned is now eating. Um, so I just bought my secateurs and it's quite handy to come out. Like I said, I always try and find sort of fallen wood rather than clip off new branches, but I might take a bit of some holly, which is maybe looking a bit weedy and not doing very much. Um, I've got my secateurs so that I can cut stuff from the trees without damaging it. And um, yeah, I'm gonna collect up a few bits just as and when I see them, as I go around on walks, I'll, I'll pick up some other bits and bobs that I find and um, put together a display for the fireplace. There's a big holly tree here, and uh, oh, I don't know if you can see actually, but it's got loads and loads of red berries on it. So, although they'd be really festive in the house, I'm not going to take any buried branches. <laughs> Ned's wondering what on earth I'm doing. I'm not going to take any of the buried branches. One, because the birds need them. We get a lot of red wings in these holly trees, but also I don't really want the berries to drop off and the cat and dog to eat them because they are poisonous. So I'm going to go along to that tree next door. Sorry, it's gone a bit dark. That tree and um, pick off some uh, non-buried branches. Now I don't know why it hasn't got any berries because it, it is a female tree and it's absolutely covered in flowers. So I'm not quite sure why it hasn't produced any berries and this one has, but anyway. <laughs> make where I when I've made too much tea in the morning and um, I've got some left over and I discovered this loaf because it's often made with vine fruit so raisins or sultanas or currants which as I've mentioned many times before I'm not very keen on so um, I had some prunes so I thought oh well you know I'll make it with prunes instead it's all kind of fruit isn't it and it was absolutely lovely. And my the tea that I have, I get it from a company called Brew Tea, which um, do proper kind of really big leaf tea. So it's kind of proper tea leaves. Um, and I make it in a pot. And I've got this lovely tea cosy, which was made for me by my friend Nikki which I really love. And so I have a big pot of tea every morning and I just work my way through it until I've woken up. And um, so I had some left over, so I thought I'd make some tea loaf. And so this has got, this is prunes soaked in, well, this is a combination of English breakfast and Earl Grey. And, um, but the Earl Grey is very perfumed. I'll probably find it a bit strong if it was on its own. So I just sort of cut it back a bit with the English breakfast. So these are prunes soaked in Earl Grey-ish tea. And I'm going to add to the bergamotty flavour of that by grating the zest of a bergamot lemon. Now this is a lemon that I only ever see them, I think they're only in season kind of this time of year, but they're really, really lovely. And they've got that kind of Earl Grey. Bye. I'll come and get it then. Bye. So I'm going to use this bergamot lemon. So like I said, they're only available this time of year and they're they just smell so perfumed. Not so much when they're um like this, but as soon as you start zesting them and certainly the fruit inside. So I really like bergamot, bergamot lemons and if you like making preserved lemons, they make absolute, absolutely uh, fantastic preserved lemons. Door shut. 
Anyway, so I'm going to grate the zest of this into um, into the prunes and tea. Now, I've uh, this is an organic uh, lemon, so uh, I, mean, I have still washed it, but obviously try and always get organic lemons anyway. But certainly get it if you're going to be using the zest in, um, and that's Ned just dropping his antler on the kitchen tiles. And oh, the smell from this is just, um, fantastic so I'll just zest this in with the prunes there we go now this is a super easy recipe in that it's just you soak the fruit you then add the dry ingredients and mix it in pop it in a tin and bake it it needs baking for quite a long time uh, but it's a it's a fatless cake um, so if you're worried about that kind of thing, it's really good for that. And you cook it on quite a low heat, so I'm just going to put the mini oven on for this. Um, I've used 250 grams of uh, prunes and about 250 ml of tea. Now I'm slightly... Uh, I did have a recipe, but I lost it. So I'm slightly making this up as I go along. So I've greased two tins because I don't know how much mixture I'm going to have so um, that's just kind of slightly you know, going along with things make it up so I'm just going to uh, weigh out the sugar basically I'm just going to put sugar flour baking powder and an egg in here and mix it up pop it in the baking tin and cook it normally you need two eggs but I've only got one so I'm just using one My chickens are sort of laying again, um, but they're all, it tends to just be the pullets. Um, the older ones have come out of their molt, so they, they, a couple of them are attempting an egg occasionally, but certainly isn't reliable. And um, I've got some other, I've got Christmas cakes to make and things, so I'm going to, um, uh, I've got to prioritise uh, those. So that's why I'm just using one egg. But to be honest, it should be fine. Uh, right, and I'm going to pop in the sugar. Now, some people don't use any sugar because, of course, the prunes have, you know, are fruit and have got sugar in them. But prunes are nothing like as sweet as, um, you know, the vine fruits. It's much less concentrated sugar. So I'm going to add in some sugar. Uh, the recipe. I was kind of vaguely following said 250 grams of sugar, but that was for more fruit and more tea. So I'm just going to use 150 grams in this one. The prunes obviously um, are, get very soft and these were the ready to eat prunes anyway. So they're already slightly squidgy rather than the um, properly dried ones. So I'm just working the, the mixture quite gently because I don't really want to break it up. Um, they won't hold their shape like the uh, vine fruits will, but um, I, uh, I quite like the texture when you still keep the prunes quite whole. So that's there. I'm now going to add in the flour and the baking powder. 250 grams of regular flour. I've actually got some cake flour rather than bread flour. And a teaspoonful of baking powder. They don't really rise much. It's it's meant to be quite a dense loaf, so that you can slice it and have it with butter. So I'm just putting in a teaspoon of baking powder. There we are, so I've mixed it round and I'm going to put it in the slightly larger cake tin because there is a bit too much mixture to go in that one. So I'm putting this in um, at about 160, uh, possibly even 150 if your oven's a bit more efficient than mine. And that will go in for about an hour. I'll check it after an hour, see how it's getting on, but it does probably need, could well need up to an hour and a half. So just uh, keep an eye on it. I don't really like giving really prescriptive times about things because everyone's ovens are different and depends 
even on how warm the ingredients are before you put them in the oven. So uh, just keep an eye on it, but certainly need an hour. So I've popped that in and I'll see how it goes. So I've just used the zest of this lemon. Um, so because of the time of year, I'm going to make some uh, lemon slices to dry and use for decorating. Um, oh, honestly, it's so perfumed. So like I said, you can either use uh, these for making preserved lemons or if you like black Earl Grey tea um, you can use a slice of this in there uh, for your tea with lemon which is just absolutely divine um, or just black tea with a slice of this but I'm, like I said I'm going to just cut these into super thin wafer thin slices and dry them off to use for decoration so um, I've got a sharp serrated knife here and you can see I've got them fairly thin and I'm then just going to put them on some kitchen roll, a baking tray and kitchen roll just to take off the excess moisture. Now you can dry them in a, in a really low oven overnight or something but I think that's a bit of a waste of electricity so I just tend to, every time I've had the oven on, I put these in after I've turned it off just to kind of dry out uh, so I don't sort of cook them specifically but I will kind of just keep doing that over a few days and leave them somewhere dry um, so in the sort of warmest room and keep turning them and just kind of keep a bit of an eye on them really because they will you know after a few days of that kind of treatment they will dry out um, and they don't really retain their scent but they smell beautiful when they're actually drying out so you get to enjoy them they're sort of bergamot fragrance for a little bit longer so yeah just cut them there that's probably about two or three millimeters thick so there are the lemon slices um, like I said I'm going to leave them I'll put some kitchen towel over the top I've got a puppy so it's an awful lot of kitchen towel <laughs> around um, and I'm just going to leave these to sort of soak up some of the moisture. Don't put them in the oven on kitchen towel or absorbent kitchen paper just because they'll kind of cook into it. So you can put them on greaseproof paper um, and just use the kitchen towels just kind of get off as much moisture as you can. Uh, like I said, if you put them in the oven on this kind of paper, they'll just stick to it and you'll end up with bits of white fluff on your beautiful lemon slices, which isn't what we're going for. So just uh, gently pat them to get rid of as much moisture as you can and then like I said I'll just over the next uh, few days I'll just keep putting them in the oven and um, as and when, I, when I've been cooking something and that should just dry them out. Here's the tea loaf. Um, as you can see it's lovely and squidgy, a little bit shiny on top. It's it's kind of like, it's quite uh, cakey and quite a sort of robust cake in as much as you could easily wrap uh, a couple of slices in, in some greaseproof paper or some foil and, and you know if you're going out for a, a walk in the country uh, it would certainly survive um, you know the journey. So it's a little bit like malt loaf if anybody here in the UK uh, knows the sort of saurine malt loaf and yeah it's you can see the prunes have kind of kept their kept their shape a little bit here it is spread with some some butter and uh, but it is quite nice without butter actually so like I said it's fat free and full of sort of slow release carbs a little bit of sugar in there so it's kind of quite tasty but not too overly sweet and the prunes give a sort of slight um, because they're Although they're, they're sweet, they're not quite as kind of concentrated sweetness at the raisins. I really, really like having them in, in um, this sort of cake. So, yeah, if you've got some leftover Earl Grey tea, maybe give it a go.
use of a mantle piece. So I'm going to put some holly in some of these um, branches up in there. When you're looking for branches, go for things which have perhaps got some nice textures. So it's not just for kind of necessarily hanging things on, but also just which have, you know, branches which have got maybe some nice lichen or some nice exposed wood and, and things that are just going to look attractive. Um, it's not just, um, you know, it's form as well as function. And oh, I'm going to, I want to arrange some of these because I don't, I don't know if I want to put sort of baubles and stuff on them or whether I just want to have them as a bit of a, a display, maybe with some, some fairy lights or something. So I'm just going to have a bit of an experiment with some of the things. Now these are beautiful. These are birch and um, aren't they Ned? Just chewing them. So I'll see if I can, I'm going to see how it looks with sort of some different textures. What? What happened? <laughs> Shh. And I've got some with some leaves still on them as well here. So I'm just going to have a bit of a, I quite like the sort of, you know, flowy, um, droopy aspect of these birch ones. And they've still got their catkins on them. Like I said, these are all from branches which have just kind of, um, I found um, on the ground. So I haven't cut any. The only things I have cut are the holly and I use my secateurs because that just means that you make a clean cut and you're not going to compromise the tree too much. Um, so I'm just going to have a bit of a play around with some different twigs. Um, there you go, Neddy, you can have that one. I'm just going to have a bit of a play around with some different things in the bars and I'm going to arrange some holly up where I had the hops. I've just cleaned my copper pans. Um, so I'm going to arrange some holly up through those as well and also some holly with the um, on the mantle piece as well. I've got various bottles, uh, port bottles and wine bottles and um, you know they all look quite nice because they reflect and refract the light which is which is quite pretty so I'm going to make a sort of bottle and twig arrangement which hopefully will look better than it sounds. to put around it here and um, so obviously that will last about oh, 40 seconds if I don't put the fire guard out there I can't wait to see what sausage makes of it um, as you can see I've just put some my little uh, Dariel moulds up here with some bottles and some holly leaves now bear in mind that holly leaves have a bright side and a dull side so just work with the foliage you've got um, just to uh, kind of you know, make sure you've got the shiny side facing out. They will go a little bit dull after a while, um, but it doesn't really sort of matter because like I said, um, these are just bits I've taken off, um, you know, from a not particularly, you know, needy part of the tree. And these bits are just um, from a fallen, uh, bits which have fallen off the ground anyway. So these are some little micro lights, which I bought much earlier in the year, which was surprisingly organized of me. Obviously those candles won't ever be lit, so that they're just, uh, not while they're there anyway, um, so they're just for decoration. But yeah, I'm really pleased. Thanks, sausage. I've got some ordinary just sort of paraffin tea lights here and I actually find them quite an unpleasant smell. So I've got some pine needle essential oil and uh, you can use any sort of um, conifer -y sort of cedar or cypress, but pine needle is quite nice. And I've just literally dabbed a blob on each, you can just see a bit there, on each of the um, tea lights. And so then when I light them, it should sort of just mask the paraffin smell a bit. And I'm going to put those in the little Dariel moulds on the mantle.
concludes the blog. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll carry on adding to the fireplaces the um, the month goes on. And um, I look forward to seeing you next time. I've got one more vlog before Vlogmas. And I'm hopefully going to be doing some things with some friends and family over December, depending on what happens with lockdown, etc. But my daughter wants to... Oh, sorry, that's email. Uh, my daughter wants to do some things together. So hopefully we'll have some fun things to do on the vlog. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.